shall we start sorry Sh shall we start yes please uh, please start i will not interrupt you uh, i will let you take over and uh, i will check uh, the chat from time to time to see if there are any questions yeah hello everyone uh, good afternoon good morning and good evening because the guys have joined with a different time zone i good to see you here in this webinar session thanks for joining this session and sharing your valuable time with us thanks elena to schedule this webinar session uh, if you guys face any issue during the webinar session you can ping in the chat box okay just let, let me give the so, uh, short introduction about myself my name is sa alam i have an seven years of experience in it domain in delivery and services and infra operation support and currently i am working with huawei india ebg in delivery and services department as a senior engineer uh, i have couple of technical certifications i have uh, hci certification in storage and cloud domain about my uh, global achievement i have represented uh, huawei india as a southeast asia level in bangkok in 2017 and i have achieved first position in 2017 and again in 2019 i have represented huawei india as a southeast asia level and uh, achieved the second position this is the uh, the so short introduction about myself okay so today's webinar session uh, in this webinar session uh, we will uh, cover the fusion access on fusion cube solution overview uh, fusion access planning and designing part and fusion access operation and maintenance uh, practices the best practices okay uh in this uh, webinar sessions we have included the network topology and the solution architecture uh we have uh, included the the fusion cube and fusion access integration and the live question answer session and the question answer session in form i hope my voice is audible to all of you guys right yes we can hear you yeah yeah okay thank you so okay let's continue okay huawei at a glance okay just let a quick view on the huawei as an ict organization okay so huawei is an ict organization as in huawei we have 195k employees all over the world okay and we have the footprints in 170 plus countries and regions as per the fortune uh, global list the ranking we are on number 44 uh, ranking list out of the 500s is a global uh, ranking and uh, we are on number 2 position in r&d r&d de uh, department investment okay uh, as per the uh, report uh, the 40 uh, the 54% of employees are in uh, research and development center the mission and the vision of the huawei is to bring uh, the digital to every person every home and the organization for a fully connected or to the intelligent world as huawei is an ict organization the main focus uh, the product lines are consumer business product line the career business product line or the enterprise business product lines Uh, huawei have the full stack data center portfolio as a huawei is an ict organization so huawei have the full stack data center portfolio with respect to the data center facility equipments with respect to the data center um, equipments uh, with respect to the software layer equipments okay in data center facilities uh, we have the upas device the uh, micro dc solution the modular dc solution and the smart batteries or the the data center facility mo uh, monitoring devices netcool 8000 these are the uh, the base base product line for 
while uh, building the uh, this one the data center solution okay at top of the base lines we have the data center equipment product lines uh, the network product lines we have the the compute product lines we have the fusion server the kunlun server and the, the storage device and the product lines we have in storage product lines we have enterprise storage the mid range storage and the the door and the inter enterprise level story in enterprise uh, we have the dorado all flash stories uh, if we are talking about the in the software layer in in software layer uh, we have fusion sphere huawei its own virtualization platform like vmware have its own AV sphere and the fusion insight solution uh, fusion cloud uh, solution uh, actually huawei have both solution in cloud domain one is a public cloud and the second one is the, the the private cloud okay and the fusion access actually the today's topic is fusion cube or uh, fusion access over the the fusion uh, cube solution so fusion access is the huawei desktop virtualization the um, cloud desktop solution okay <clears throat> okay let's uh, now basically what all are the key challenges in desktop uh, uh, pc infrastructure so let's discuss about the existing uh, infra the challenges what all challenges we are facing in our traditional uh, desktop pc infrastructure so uh, the, and there is some uh, the key challenges which we are facing in, da in daily operation in, in day to day operations in our uh, uh, desktop PC infrastructure. The major concerns is the data security. Uh, in the, this one, uh, PC desktop solution, we don't have the hardware redundancy, the high power consumption. The there is a possibility to hack the data, to hack the system. Too much cables need to lay down if we have the 50 users uh, infra. So there is too much cables we have to lay down for the interconnectivity and uh, uh, difficult to upgrade the hardware if any expansion required so uh, there is the difficulties there is the challenge to upgrade the existing uh, the hardware and difficult to uh, maintain the, the branch offices and high operational cost okay these are the key challenges the one of the major key challenges they are the hidden cost what actually is hidden cost the hidden cost of the, the PC desktop infrastructure. Let me explain about this one. While we procuring the project, right? The actual project cost, which is visible to us, is about the procure installation and the deployment cost. Behind of that cost, there is much of a, a hidden cost which is not visible during the procurement, like operational cost. The operational of cost to manage that infra the PC desktop infra is about 44%. And the system integration and customization cost is about 13%, which th these costs are the hidden cost actually. And the I IT maintenance cost. And uh, the, as I explained uh, in the um, PC desktop infrastructure, uh, we don't have the, the hardware redundancy, right? So the service downtime cost is about seven percent in the you know, PC desktop solution and same is the need to arrange the training to our IT department or our IT, internal IT team so total operational cost of the PC desktop is about two to three times of capital of uh, expenditure cost okay as uh, you know uh, first you have to understand that uh, why industry is moving toward the the cloud desktop solution what all are benefits in that solution if we are moving from the the pc desktop solution to the the cloud desktop solution okay the major concern for the uh, organization is the, uh, the data security or the information security okay uh, if you are talking about um, uh, the uh, desktop pc solution in desktop pc solution our data is stored locally where the users are working right so there is the possibilities of uh, the the information leakage or the data loss uh, what about the data loss actually in uh, in our desktop pc solution we don't have the redundancy of the disk 
might be my disk got faulty so my data will be lost right and the high reliable architecture we uh, we will get in the desktop uh, solution is to uh, to prevent the information leakage or to prevent the data loss so these uh, challenges we can overcome in the desktop uh, solution architect um, cloud desktop solution okay the operation and maintenance efficiency okay what about operation and maintenance efficiency uh, in uh, desktop pc solution there is the challenge to maintain or to operate means uh, 50 users desktop so to overcome this uh, challenge so in desktop uh, uh, cl uh, cloud desktop solution we have the operation and maintenance efficiency we can quickly provision the desktop as per the requirement there is central uh, centralized operation and management the low operation cost and the minimum downtime is required so we can overcome these uh, the that points is here in uh, cloud desktop solution and the desktop standardization we can do in the cloud desktop solution and uh, the third one is the flexibility and the availability that is more important if we are talking about the it as an it organization or in it infrastructure so high resource availability uh, we can provision the resource uh, that there is the high resource uh, availability in the cloud desktop solution uh, we have the flexibility to access our cloud desktop from any time or from anywhere right and we can uh, provision the resource on demand if uh, in urgency we, we require the the resource provisioning so on demand we can provision the resource as per the requirement that's why the industry is moving towards the cloud desktop uh, solution so let's come on the topic uh, in previous slides i have covered that uh, the risk in the, in the desktop pc solution and the the uh, benefits or the features of the the cloud desktop uh, solution okay just let's come on the topic on the uh, huawei fusion cube and fusion access solution overview and the architectures Okay, let's discuss about the Huawei Fusion Cube solution. Huawei Fusion Cube, in second turn, we can say as a HCI solution like Nutanix or the VMware. They have the similar solution we have the in Huawei. Huawei, we have the Fusion Cube. What actually is Fusion Cube? Why Fusion Cube is in a uh, trend? So uh, Fusion Cube has replaced uh, the traditional IT infrastructure what actually is traditional IT infrastructure? In traditional IT infrastructure, we have the external storage device, we have the sense switch, we have the compute resource servers, we have the network devices and the security device for the IT infrastructure, right? So in Fusion Cube, Fusion Cube is replacing the traditional IT infrastructure, okay? So while we are talking about the Fusion Cube, in Fusion Cube, we don't require any sense switch or any the external storage device. So in traditional infrastructure, we have to log in the separate portals to monitor the sense switch. We need to log in the separate portal to monitor the external storage device. We need to monitor the separate device to monitor the hardware layer of the devices and same for the virtualization layer okay but in fusion cube in fusion cube we have the simplified storing the data uh, how, how the the simplified storing data if we don't have the storage in fusion cube actually in fusion cube we have the hci nodes yeah. okay in hci node they have the in the uh, itself the hard disk or is uh, there in the nodes okay uh, with the help of that hard disk we will uh, configure the fusion cube so that is the, you can say is the distributed storage. There is no physical layer of that, but the all hard disk, which has inserted in the, the nodes, will take a part state and will uh, provide one common pool, one storage pool uh, for the resource provisioning. And we will provision the uh, space to the same server over the iSCSI protocol, okay? This is kind of a simplified storing our data. And the unified management, 
in fusion cube if we uh, we got the unified management uh, we can um, manage and monitor okay uh, the devices the hardware layer or the network switch layer or the virtualization layer okay these are all uh, monitoring uh, devices monitoring parameters we can monitor into the single console no need to log in the separate separate console to monitor the hardware device or to monitor the network device or to monitor the virtualization or to monitor the, the resource utilization okay and the intelligent operation and um, um, maintenance in uh, if we talking about the intelligent operation and maintenance in traditional we need to collect the storage logs we need to collect the sense switch logs uh, we need to collect the virtualization logs or the vm logs but in uh, fusion cube we can uh, collect uh, the uh, the logs uh, from the uh, fusion cube portal itself so later on i will show you the fusion cube access uh, the portal and will give the overview how we will collect the logs how we will monitor uh, once these uh, layers are deployed the uh, the above is the application layer so application might be uh, the virtualization or the database or the vdi or the robo and the as oil gas uh, oil gas and campus in, uh, industry okay the fusion cube logical architecture as, as i explained uh, in the fusion cube we don't require the this one the storage device in uh, first is the hardware fusion cube hardware platform in hardware platform the servers might be the blade chassis or the the high density server or the rack server uh, intel base or the arm base uh, servers at top of the fusion uh, the hardware layer and there is two layers one is the virtualization layer the virtualization layer it might be the huawei fusion sphere this is huawei on virtualization platform or it might be the vmware v uh, virtualization platform uh, v sphere the second one is the fusion storage so as, as i explained that the all disk of the nodes will take a participate and will build uh, will provide one a single storage pool and that storage pool we call it a fusion sphere is a uh, distributed storage okay uh, in that um, uh, in fusion storage uh, we will get the the features like deduplication and compression the thin provisioning the ec ec features or link clone or active active solution and we can enable the snapshot right so the same feature uh, features which we got in the the on uh, the uh, other storage like external storage okay uh, or sen storage okay uh, while we talking about the fusion access so this layer the virtu one second the the virtualization layer uh, will be the huawei fusion sphere the the fusion access is supported by this one okay and we we get the operation and maintenance window the uh, the fusion fcc fusion cube center we will do the end to end monitoring and the operation okay we can provision the vms we can provision the uh, volumes we can assign the volumes to the host as per the requirement okay in the top of the virtualization layer as i explained we can use as a virtualization okay or we can deploy the vdi in in the today's topic is the 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 service scenario is the vdi okay and we can use as a docker oracle or a for the database scenario okay who have a fusion access on fusion cube solution uh, the architecture uh, first we have the hardware layer hardware layer is servers or the network device in say in servers we have the sci node so top of this one on uh, the fusion cube layer in fusion cube layer we got the computing the resource pool we got the fusion storage pool and the network resource pool top of the fusion cube okay the third layer is the fusion access this is the complete solution of fusion access over the fusion cube okay in fusion cube uh, we provision uh, provision on the end user virtual desktop and install the application and assign to the and the end user okay these are some uh, the uh, key, 
key soft components of the fusion access like ita or wi web interface virtual access gateway virtual load balancer the, and the uh, existing it components like ad or dns dscp okay top of the fusion access uh, there is the wan access uh, wan network okay in uh, top of the wan network there is the terminal platform what is mean by the terminal platform the terminal platform uh, actually in fusion access the virtual the, the hardware layer the fusion cube layer and the fusion access layer this is uh, far away from the this this layer okay so from this layer the end users will access their their virtual uh, desktop okay so the terminal platform it may be the thin client or it may be the pc or the laptop or phone the user can access their virtual desktop using phone or ipod so he can access from anywhere or anytime the, to the virtual desktop or the cloud desktop okay <clears throat> So the logical architecture of the fusion cube. Okay, so there is the multiple layers in the fusion cube. The terminal layers, as I explained, the end users will access their the cloud desktop. So the, the this one, the user, the user will access their virtual desktop or cloud desktop using the thin client or the laptop or the PC. This is asset management means operation guy. What is the role of this one? or while it directly communicating to this uh, cloud platform. So this, uh, the terminal, the end user, the end user is communicating like on this path, right? This is uh, communicating on this way. But this asset management user is directly communicating this one, okay, to the cloud platform. The role of this one, this is the, the operation guys, who is managing the infra, the cloud infra, okay? So he have the rights, he, he will directly access uh, the, the layer, the few the cloud platform layer he will provision the the uh he will provision the um, the user uh, vms as per the requirement he will do the troubleshooting from the he, from the terminal layer the uh, the end user okay so the end user will access here in the virtual desktop so how how the the flow will process the end user will log into the thin client then thin client will communicate to the load balancer and the load balancer will communicate to video uh, wi and the wi wi will check with the, the existing it components okay existing it components mean ad uh, dns dhcp or the file server the license server also the part of the existing it components okay so the, uh, the the wi will check with the active directory so that particular user have the valid credential or um, uh, well, have the valid credential or not okay so once is verified then it will go the request to the the hdc uh, who have a desktop controller it will communicate to the ita and it will uh, come to check the license the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the this one uh, the, that uh, the virtual desktop have the particular license, the required license, and the, the HDC, Huawei desktop controller, will communicate to the, the end user, the end this one, the term, the, <coughs> that thin client uh, service manager uh, as end, okay, to the fusion sphere layer, okay. <coughs> this is the flow, or this is the logical architecture of the fusion access. Okay, there is uh, three layers. One is the desktop access layer, access control layer, and the operation uh, control layer. Okay. So, uh, VDI is a two type. Fusion access have the two categories. One is the uh, VDI and the SBC. VDI means virtual desktop interface, and the SBC is uh, kind of uh, application virtualization or service based computing. Okay. Uh, in VDI scenario, uh, we have, suppose we have uh, 20 users or 10 users. So each user have their own uh, the virtual desktop. So so every user will get their own uh, uh, the PC, like the physical PC, or he will access their rem remote um, uh, PC, okay, over the network. 
So in the um, uh, SBC scenario, SBC scenario, uh, suppose in the, uh, uh, we have to, uh, this one, install the application in a one, uh, one particular VM, and we'll give the access to the, uh, the multiple users as per the, our requirement, as per our infra requirement, okay? So the multiple users will access uh, their, and then the same application over the network. Okay. <clears throat> uh, fusion cube and fusion access planning and designing. Uh, while because the base layer is the fusion cube, right? So first let's discuss about the fusion cube. In fusion cube uh, layer, a uh, minimum three nodes we, we require to deploy the fusion cube uh, solution. Okay. Uh, there is the type of the node minimum two MCN node and one SCN node is required uh, to deploy uh, this one, the Fusion Cube. What is actually MCN and what is actually uh, SCN? What all service they provide? Uh, while, while we uh, configure the role, uh, while we deploying the Fusion Cube, we need to define the role on the node, node layer, on the server layer. So th this node will act as a MCNA or this node will act as a SCNA or CNA, right? So this uh, role we have to define during the deployment. So while we define the MCNA uh, role to the node, in the MCNA, the MCNA node will provide the, the management, uh, uh, the management resource. Management resource means uh, the infra VMs will deploy on the MCNA nodes, okay? and the computing resource it will provide and the storage uh, resource it will provide if the MCNA node have the disk um, uh, uh, itself, okay? If the MCNA node have the disk, then it will provide the, the storage resource as well. In the uh, SCNA node, SCNA nodes uh, will provide us to the computing resource and the storage resource, okay? And uh, if we have the large infra, there is some node which uh, which will play as a, a CNA node, okay? So the CNA nodes will only play the role of the computing. So they will provide only the computing resource to provision the VMs. And uh, if any nodes is there whose role is the SCNA, so that nodes will only provide the storage space. So don't, the, no VMs will be allocated on the SCNA node. And the, the last one is the, the database node which will provide the database and this one. In top of the nodes, we have to uh, configure the virtualization platform. The virtualization platform, it may be the Huawei Fusion Sphere or the VMware vSphere. In the Fusion Access scenario, as I, I uh, told you earlier as well, in Fusion Access scenario, the virtualization platform will be the Fusion, this one, the Fusion uh, Sphere, okay? So let's discuss about the networking part to deploy. The networking will be the common for uh, Fusion Cube and the Fusion Access. So this is the base layer actually. We cannot uh, modify later on. So, so the networking part is the common for the both solutions, okay? Uh, while deploying the Fusion Cube, Fusion Access on the Fusion Cube, the base layer is the Fusion Cube. And the network part is the, there is separate, the multiple networks we have to define during the deployment part. So one is the management network. Management network means the OS management network, okay? Sometimes we got the confusion between the management network. Sometimes we consider management network as a hardware network, right? So management network means the OS management network. The second one is the, the storage plane network, okay? So storage plane network here will be the in, internal uh, column part, okay? Uh, it will communicate, uh, the host will communicate with each other for the storage service over this network. So this network will not allow to the customer network. This is the internal network of the fusion queue. The service plane, the service plane might be the uh, separate separate network as per the the uh, infra requirement. This is the actual where we will provision uh, the user VM. Okay, 
so might be the the service plane have the different different subnet okay the the last one is the bmc plane what actually is bmc plane um bmc plane is the the hardware management hardware management network through we can access the hardware the ibmc in huawei like ibmc or dell id rack so this is the the hardware management so anyone have any question here let me check if you still have a specific question please uh, add it in the chat now so that our presenter or, can or, see it. Or, or let we have that question on session once we completed the the in this one the training the webinar let's continue and we will check uh, the questions later okay 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 yeah yeah sure sure thank, thank you, you. Okay, these uh, all four types of network we have to design during the deployment deployment of the uh, fusion uh, fusion access over the fusion cube. So the same network will uh, if if suppose we don't have the uh, the fusion access uh, solution, we have only the fusion cube. In during that time also the same network we have to define. Okay, so there is no need to uh, change in the uh, here in the network part. So uh, let me add one more thing here. So oh, while we uh, uh, we can deploy the fusion access over the fusion sphere solution as well. So if, if suppose if we have the virtualization platform in our uh, uh, infra, right? Uh, there is no fusion cube solution. In that scenario, also we can deploy the fusion access. Uh, in the the solution will be the fusion access top of the fusion sphere. Okay. Okay. Once the fusion cube is deployed, you will get the home page. This is the FCC center, the overview, the view. Okay. This is uh, uh, in this page. Uh, you will check the application scenario is fusion sphere. Okay. So we have deployed the fusion cube with the fusion sphere solution. Okay. Here, as I explained, you know there is a unified uh, um, the monitoring. So here you can check your the device status, the nodes, the physical nodes. Okay, here you can check the uh, the virtual resource uh, status. Okay, then this part I will cover in the the last last of the PPT. In my last PPT, I will cover you. I will give some overview on this one. Okay, in the live session. So before uh, after the fusion cube is deployed with the fusion sphere solution we have to configure some vms and do the some initial configuration for the uh, fusion access uh, uh, to deploy the fusion access okay there is some infra where we have to define the role the ita and the vi or the and um, the vlb or vag role we have to define uh, while uh, configuring the the fusion access okay the ips also we have to define for the particular uh, the service and uh, you will get the home page the, this is the home page for the while fusion access and the fusion these are the the key components to while deploying the the fusion access okay so database database server or hdc huawei desktop controller ita it adapter or the license and the WI and the VAG and the VL, uh, VLB. Actually, what, what is the role of the WI? So WI will provide the web interface to the end user, okay? After the, suppose, after user initiated, initiate the login request from the thin client, okay? So the WI will forward the user login information uh, to the AD for the authentication. That particular user have the, the authentic, the, uh, required authentication or not if the authentication is success right so the wi display a vm list are uh, provided by the hdc to the user that particular okay then user can uh, choose the vm from the list of this one okay this is the role of the wi the web interface okay and the ita ita is actually as a it adapter it provides uh, the interface to the user to manage the vms the end the cloud desktop vms mean the 
the cloud desktop. It will provide the interface to user to manage the cloud desktop. It in the, the ITA, the ITA will interact with the HDC and the cloud platform software. Okay, cloud platform software here we have the fusion compute or fusion sphere, we can call it a fusion sphere. Okay, to create and assign the VM or manage the VM status or the template. Okay. And the HDC, what, what actually is HDC? So the HDC is a Huawei desktop controller. This is a core component, okay, of the virtual desktop management software. HDC is actually manage uh, this one, the desktop groups and uh, assign VMs to the users or unassign VMs from the users. Might be some VMs are not in use, so it will unassign the VMs from the users or receiving the request. So HDC will interact, as I uh, told you, the ITA, ITA will, uh, the ITA, ITA will interact with the HDC, okay? And it enables users to log in into the VM, this one. This is the role of the HDC. Okay, one more component is uh, HDP, uh, HDP client. Uh, the HDP client will install on the terminal that is used to access the virtual desktop means the thin client or the pc where where we have to install the hpc client okay i hope you got the understanding of the of the key component of the fusion access these these actually are the key component of the fusion access the VAG and the VLB is a virtual access gateway and the, the VL, VLB is the virtual load balancer. Uh, one, one more is the license server. It will provide, it will check the required VM have the, the sufficient license or not. So this, this, this might be the existing license server or we need to uh, configure the new license server. So it depends upon the scenario. So while my this one fusion access uh, is deployed, right? So we need to provision the, uh, we got this home page while my fusion access portal is ready for the provisioning of the user VM. So uh, the next is we need to create the VM in the fusion uh, sphere. After that, we will convert that VM into the template. Okay, um, before converting. So here basically the, the general mistake what we done, uh, before converting uh, the, the template, the VM to the template, we have to do some customization on that particular VM, which we need to custom, uh, uh, convert as a template and will use for the, the user, uh, user VM uh, provisioning, okay? <coughs> Sorry, guys. First, we will create the VM in the Fusion Cube, okay? Uh, we'll install the the OS. The OS will be the Windows OS 10 or the 8 as per the requirement. And uh, here, here is the and the uh, key. Here we will install the application. Once the application is installed, uh, we will uh, optimize that particular VM before converting to template. We will use a one utility, the desktop access, the Windows installer, Fusion Access Windows installer. We will optimize, we will customize. After the customization, we will convert as a template, okay? Once the template, uh, then this is the, the utility in the home page. While you uh, click on that utility, this window will open and you will have to customize that particular VM, okay? So uh, during uh, creating the template, you need to select some parameters as per your uh, the, the requirement. Might be it may be the full copy or it may be the link clone. Okay, the, these parameters it depend upon the scenario based or as per the custom, customer requirement. So while uh, the template is ready, okay, you need to register that template into the Fusion Access uh, the portal. Okay, once the template is registered, then you can provision the user VM. Okay, the VM will take a flower a flavor from the template. So here you can select the, the, the VM group uh, type, 
the full copy link clone or full memory the group name you can create the new new vm group or you can select the v existing uh, vm group so definitely while you this is the uh, new deployment in that particular time you uh, you have to create the, the new uh, new vm group and suppose uh, you have the uh, the multiple uh, department in your organization like uh, r and d department or like uh, the uh, hr department or like uh, the production department right in uh, because uh, the every department have their own application or right so the, uh, the hr department is using the separate application or the the r and d department is using the separate applications and the, the production department is using the separate application uh, so basically on the, that uh, as per the requirement uh, we have to create the template as per the department wise so we will provision the, further we will provision the vm suppose uh, the the new new requirement is come from the r and d department to provision the new five vms so we will use the the r and d department template for the provisioning some uh, hr department is uh, uh, request for the vm provision then then definitely we will use that uh, um, particular template so we will create the template so there might be a different template uh, uh, we can register in the fusion access if suppose my uh, the infra um, the in my organization the everyone uh, the uh, same applications are using okay so there is no need to uh, uh, register the multiple templates so uh, with the same templates we can provision the vm while provisioning the vms you have to select some parameters so some parameters it will automatically take from the, the from the template itself so here will be the uh, template you have to select that that particular template on which uh, you have to provision the vm this frame this uh, type and this uh, parameters it will take from the the template flavor okay and here you can you can provision the the vms in the batch okay so what what uh, ever in the requirement from suppose 10 vms or the 5 vms so uh, after this, this one you can monitor your the provisioning task once you pro, pro click on provision uh, you can monitor your task as well though how much uh, the progress is there how much percentage is completed sometimes it's give, given an error while uh, provisioning the vm so that error also you can uh, read from here itself okay <clears throat> So how, as, as I explained, uh, the, the device are in, the components are integrated with each other. So let's uh, check how the, the uh, WI is access, how it will give the web interface to the user. Okay. So and this is this is the process how the the end user will get the the web console of that particular VM. Okay. So thin client will send the request to the secure VPN or v, VAG or VLB. The, the VAG or VLB will communicate to the WI, and WI will check uh, with the A Active Directory, and we, it will send the graphical view to the the end user or the remote desktop or the terminal device. Okay. Uh, how the user authentication is performed in the, in the fusion access? Okay, just let's see this one. So the, the, the device are uh, communicating with each other. And HDC, Huawei Desktop Controller, it will send the request to the Active Directory. Or Active Directory will send the authentication if that particular user have the required authentication. Okay? <clears throat> and will return to the, the terminal device or the end user. Okay? Uh, you know how how to log in the the virtual desktop what is the mechanism behind the the while login the the no, desktop cloud the the desktop no, the cloud desktop okay so this is the process how the cloud desktop will access Okay, let, let, let me explain. Okay, the, the terminal device, the terminal device uh, might be a thin client or the PC or the phone or the tab, right? This is the actual end user where the end user is managing his 
cloud desktop okay will the request will send to the the load balancer the vag the vlb the, or the svn it will check with the wi wi will provide the the web, web interface and wi will uh, check uh, the communicate with the hdc okay the authentication is already done right now the uh, is the login uh, you know, this one process okay so hdc hdc uh, will check will communicate with the hda and return the request the success request and the hdc will check the license as uh, i explained in the, the fusion access component the key component one is the license right like license server so the hdc will check with the license server that particular vm have the valid license or not once the the license is uh, confirmed the um, the uh, the login process will complete to the the end user the return request the login request will send to the the end user okay and uh, as i explained earlier the unified operation and management system in fusion cube uh, we got right in fusion uh, access uh, we we have to manage only a single portal of the fusion access and the fusion access we can provision we can register the vm templates or we can define the vm name ruling or thin client binding right we can create the vm group or the desktop group and the policies uh, policies is the the important uh, the part of the fusion access okay so earlier in the traditional infrastructure we have to apply the policies on the ad uh, in the active directory or the ou group right so here in fusion the access we have the provision uh, to um, uh, apply the policies on the uh, at the the security policies the, on the usb policies or the audio policies right and the keyboard uh, keyboard and mouse policies right and we can apply the the redirection policies right the printer and the security policy the policies we can configure here we can customize the the policies in a fusion access as per the requirement okay so no need to apply the policy in the active directory we can apply the policies in the uh, fusion access as well if we have the solution okay so this is the unified management uh, uh, portal for the fusion cube center as uh, i have already explained we can uh, monitor in the fcc portal uh, we can monitor the physical device uh, okay physical device mean the, the the network switches or the the hci nodes hci nodes mean servers we can uh, uh, check the their the reachability between the virtualization uh, the fcc center to the physical device okay uh, we can uh, manage the virtual resources we can monitor the virtual resources okay and we can uh, monitor the resource utilization okay and the physical computing resource the network configuration the resource uses and storage pool uh, status and the storage pool uh, the uses okay okay let's just uh, give me this one access to the uh, this is the uh, fusion cube center and the login piece okay this is the uh, access of the fusion cube uh, in fusion cube you can check your physical uh, devices okay how many devices are there in your solution how many physical nodes are there what is the the storage pool utilization what uh, how much the allocated right the total and the health status of the storage pool if you have configured the separate uh, the uh, the multiple storage uh, pool right so you you can drag uh, down from here you can check from the here okay and the cluster status you can configure the uh, the multiple cluster one for the management cluster and one the the, uh, the compute cluster or you can uh, configure as per your requirement okay you can check your total uh, resource uh, on the, the status and the uh, the resource uh, the the uses okay how much how percentage the resource are used and how percentage resource are still free and the the, the cpu uses and the, the the memory uses okay this is the uses okay and you can check in the percentage and you can check in the graphical view as well 
and here you can check the network uh, the nick nick utilization of the, uh, the nodes okay the io bandwidth utilization the delay this is the the critical uh, this one parameters to to monitor okay so the if any performance issue so this this uh, parameter we have to uh, first analyze what is the delay what is the the I, io response time okay so here here you can check the health status means you you have any critical alert or the major alert or the warning or the uh, in healthy state okay you can check from here uh, you you can provision the v, uh, vms from here itself vms storage pool you can provision the vm okay in the fusion uh, fusion cube in fusion axis fusion axis you have to provision the terminal the the, the desktop cloud that provisioning you have to do in the fusion uh, this one uh, in a fusion access portal okay this this uh, vm provisioning if you are using the virtualization uh, as a as application scenario then you can provision the vm from here okay you can check the hardware status okay the hardware status is you can check from here itself the mcn the role of the node the mcn the database node the, the the ip the management ip means the the os ip of that particular node and the bmc ip of that particular node bmc ip, IP means the hardware and you can you can log into the bmc from here okay and no need to uh, browse the ip no need to remember the ip of that bmc you can directly go to the bmc portal from here itself let's come on the monitoring part so this is the unified portal for the monitoring of the hardware layer to monitoring of the virtualization layer to monitoring of the, the resource utilization layer okay they, these are this is the unified portal here, here here you will easily identify the error what actual error is there the license license are not loaded or the any other the remote uh, management data backup are not configured right this you can or you can export the, the alert Sometimes uh, for the management, you have to submit the report of last one year. Then you can uh, select the, the time period as per the, your the requirement. So what uh, the time period, the, the alerting you want, OK? <clears throat> this is the alert setting. You can uh, configure the alert setting. You can configure your mail. The mail, the, the alert will go on your mail using the SMTP protocol. <clears throat> Uh, this is the the performance the performance you can you can check from the the hardware layer or the the cluster layer or the vm layer suppose vm layer we have to check the performance we need to select the the vm name or the the indicator the which uh, we have to uh, the check right and the time time slot in which uh, in which time slot we have to check the performance sometime we have okay, okay. So here you can check your performance in that particular time period in with respect to the VM, with respect to the, the servers, or with respect to the, the cluster resource, OK? Uh, cluster also you can check here, OK? OK, uh, in, this, uh, in this one, in Fusion Q, as, as we explained, this is the, the, the unified portal where we can do the operation management and the monitoring right so system in system manner you you can do the health check the the quarterly health check or the weekly health check of the servers okay in fusion cube center this this health check is included in your this one the hardware layer your uh, distributed storage layer your virtualization layer and the fusion compute layer the health check okay so here here you can run the health check activity and then some uh, some parameters might be failed okay so you 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 can uh, check uh, you will get the this report and you can export the report the health check report and you will easily identify what what all parameters are faulty okay here like system uh, the system have the critical alert you you can check you can check as well what of what all parameters are pass so you you will be easily you is is easily identify uh, understand the, the failure okay using this uh, this is very important uh, if we are using the the fcc or fusion access uh, platform 
the log selection you can uh, collect the logs from here itself you can select the time duration of the log collection you can select the, the nodes on which you have to collect the logs or you can select the all hardware okay or you can select the particular hardware and you you select the the particular time period and you can upgrade the the system from here itself <clears throat> so this is from my end elena thank you to arranging this webinar thank you thank you as well if you still have questions please uh, leave them in a the chat kashif i saw that you left some questions do you still have some questions or uh, were they answered if you still have a question please uh, leave it again in the chat um, can you please uh, share the presentation again or do you want me to share the presentation okay i will share because Just a second, please. Okay, I hope that you can hear my, you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So for those of you who are new to this, uh, to this webinar sessions, uh, they are being uh, prepared uh, and organized by the Huawei Enterprise Support Community. Uh, this is the official technical community for all Huawei Enterprise products, solutions, and certifications. Uh, we already have uh, over 436,000 members, uh, including engineers, Huawei experts, customers, partners, and students from all around the world. Uh, you can find an extensive knowledge base with over 77,000 posts that you can learn from. Uh, we have a solving time for technical issues of under 24 hours, which means that if you have a technical issue related to Huawei Enterprise products, uh, you will be able to uh, receive the solution in this community. Uh, we have also created uh, a public recognition a recognition and reward system for the most active members of our community. We have a dedicated elite users program uh, where the most active users of this community can have more uh, special and exclusive roles in this community. Uh, we have uh, high coins, which are the vir virtual currency of this community and also rewards that you can find uh, in the online shop uh of course that if you want to uh, subscribe to our monthly activities and webinars you can go to the subscribe page in the community let me show you so as you can see this is the subscribe page and you can decide exactly which uh, content you are interested in if you are just interested in webinars you can select uh, the type of webinars you want to receive notifications about if you want to be notified about other activities as well you can also subscribe here Okay, let me check the chat because, uh, okay, good. Um, okay, so as I said in the beginning, we have prepared two uh, activities for those of you who are attending this webinar, please uh, pay attention now because this is the moment to uh, participate in the live Q&A session. Um, okay, you have the webinar link already. Uh, this is, I will show you in the community. You can go to the homepage, you'll find the banner here. You can access it, from, access it from the homepage as well. As you can see, this is the webinar post that I was uh, mentioning. And this is the comment section of this uh, post, okay? So in the next 10 minutes, I invite you all to uh, leave a comment saying that I attended this webinar. So you have 10 minutes to uh, leave your comment in, uh, in the community under this webinar post. 
after you leave the comment in the community, I would really appreciate it if you can also leave a comment in the chat to confirm that you, uh, you left a, a comment in the community as well. So you, you still have 10 minutes to, uh, to leave a comment. And just to make sure, please go to the webinar post in the community, okay? So please uh, leave a comment here. This is the activity post. You can easily find it. It also has today's date in the title. So I invite you to start, uh, start leaving your comments there. Okay. So uh, this first activity is very easy. All you have to do is uh, leave a comment saying that I attended this webinar uh, and we will choose five, uh, five users uh, who have attended this webinar and left a comment in uh, the 10 minutes that uh, were allowed. Okay, so um, let, me, let me show you the next, uh, the next uh, activity that we have prepared for you. So in case you are not of the winners in the first activity, you still have a chance to win in the second activity. Uh, there will be three questions that you need to answer, as I said in the beginning. Uh, you need to go to the same place, which means uh, to the community post, and you need to leave uh, your answers there. Uh, for this activity, we will choose five more winners. Uh, the reward is a $20 Amazon gift card. Uh, in order to win, you need to answer the three questions correctly as well. Okay, so the winners will be selected uh, from those who replied correctly to the three questions that we will share. I will show you the questions, but I will also upload them in the in the webinar post uh, after we end the live session. So don't worry in case you miss the question now, uh, you will be able to find them uh, in the community as well. Okay, so I will update this post and I will add, uh, I will add the questions here uh, at the bottom of the post and you'll be able to uh, start replying uh, after that. Um, you still have uh, five more days to answer the questions and we will announce the winners by uh, May 25th. Okay. Let me show you the three questions now. Okay, this is the first question. A simple yes or no question. As I said, don't worry, I will also update the community post. So uh, this is just so that you get a preview of the questions that you'll have the ans uh, to answer, okay? Second question, you can see it. Minimum nodes required to deploy Fusion Access over Fusion Cube. And this is the third question. Okay. Um, okay. I kindly, I kindly ask you to go to the community post and answer the questions there. Okay. You'll have to go here in the community and leave a comment uh, under this post. So please don't leave the answers in the chat because they will not be taken into account. You need to leave a comment here in the community, okay? Let me share the, share the link again, just to make sure that it's clear for everyone. So please, uh, please check the chat again. Uh, this is where you have to go and answer the three questions, okay? Uh, also, in case you still have questions left about this uh, particular topic, you can also uh, leave them under this, uh, webinar post and we will make sure that they are uh, answered and if you have any suggestions for us in terms of uh, webinar topics that you'd like us to approach in the future uh, and also if you'd be interested in hosting a webinar please make sure to you can write to me uh, in private or you can leave a comment however you want just please share your feedback it's really important to us to know uh, what type of content uh, you want us to provide and we will we will try our best to find the best presenters uh, for that particular topic um, thank you all 
Thank you for attending. Thank you for your interest in this topic and thank you for your kind feedback. Always appreciated. Uh, I wish you all a good day uh, or good evening ahead, depending on where you're from. And uh, I hope that you will uh, subscribe to the webinar collection and also subscribe to our uh, emails to make sure that you don't miss out on any important updates or any important webinars that we will have in the future. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention and uh, looking forward to see you in the next webinars. Thank you, everyone.